I am so excited about what's in this box. I mean, this is not just an unboxing. This is a bucket list moment for me. And I'm gonna share it with you right now. Don't you know that you're a grown up? No gates, no puns. Not a lot if you're a grown up. Hello again, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John, I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you so much for joining me for this very, very special Gen X Grown Up video. What I have in this box is something that I have been pining for for a minimum of three years, but possibly for as long as 30 plus years. Enough suspense, let's jump right into this. I can't wait. Here we go. Oh, this is just finally, finally, finally. It's newspaper, how amazing. All right, I'm gonna, a moment of suspense, I'm gonna dig down here. So this comes with some paperwork. I'll take a closer look at all this in a minute. I'll set this paperwork aside. What do we have in here? Yeah, it looks like garbage, I know. This is an original ET cartridge that was excavated from the Alamogordo, New Mexico landfill in 2014 from the original 1983 video game crash dumping. In a minute, I'll give you a closer look and we're gonna give this relic a more respectable display. But first, a little backstory. E.T. The Extraterrestrial is a 1982 adventure video game developed and published by Atari for the Atari 2600. It's based on the film of the same name and was developed by Howard Scott Warshaw, the same guy who developed one of that console's best titles, Yars Revenge. The objective of E.T. is to guide your alien through various screens, collecting three pieces of an interplanetary telephone, and ultimately phone home so his ship will come and pick him up. Now, E.T. is frequently maligned as one of the worst video games of all time, and it's often believed to be a significant contributor to the great video game crash of 1983. Now, it is true that more copies of the game were produced than there were Atari 2600 consoles in homes, with the belief the game would drive hardware sales, but this belief turned out to be wrong. However, it is my stance that E.T. is pretty far from the worst game ever. In fact, I have fond memories of playing it the very Christmas it was released, and for months thereafter. It was difficult, it was pretty unpolished, but it wasn't the worst game ever. Rather, I assert it was a relatively small straw which broke an already weakened camel's back. One of the reasons for this weakened market was oversaturation. Atari, one of the giants of the video game industry at the time, was left with a mountain of unsold and returned to stock as consumers started to lose confidence in gaming. Atari ultimately needed to get rid of this embarrassing overstock of inventory and basically just make it disappear. Their solution? Drive trucks full of useless stock to Alamogordo, New Mexico, a small desert town, and quietly bury all this stuff in a landfill and entomb it under a layer of concrete. Problem solved, right? Since the burial was first reported in the press, there'd been doubts as to whether it really happened at all and was often just dismissed as an urban legend. Now, whether it happened or not didn't matter. The story became a cultural icon and reminder of the North American video game crash of 83. And it was a cautionary tale of a company with more power and money than it knew how to handle. And the end result was a disastrous fiscal year which saw Atari Incorporated sold off by its parent company, Warner Communications. You're here in the future with me, so you know that video games didn't stay dead. Not long after the 83 crash, the games industry started to recover. It wasn't long before Atari items of this vintage, this early 80s era, started to become desirable to collectors. And word started to spread about what lost treasures might be buried in the Alamogordo tomb. And in fact, whether or not it even existed at all. I have some more to tell you, but first, let's take an up-close look at this amazing relic and the items that accompanied it in the box. So first, Alamogordo included this lovely travel brochure, so if you'd like to visit and see something other than the landfill, you know what to see. Next, they included these kind of low-res, but historical nonetheless, articles from the Alamogordo Daily News. These were originally published back in September of 1983, when originally they were dumping these truckload after truckload of Atari surplus in their landfill. It clearly documents it for anyone who thinks it's just an urban myth. They explain how it was dumped and how concrete was then used to cover it up 
to keep local kids from looting and getting free Atari stuff. The story then continues with these sheets that tell a little bit more about the landfill itself. They talk about the burial in 83 and they continue on to show information about the dig in 2014 and give you some more context into where this relic came from. Now, if you purchased one like I did, you know all this backstory already, but this is really nice to have for someone that doesn't know all the details about why I would have this piece of garbage in my home. All right, on to the main event then. Here she is. This is one of those original cartridges which was buried in the New Mexico desert for 31 years. Against all odds, it was discovered, and here it is. I have one. There's a certificate of authenticity. There's the official badge. It's very smelly. <laughs> it's, I mean, rightfully so. It came out of a dump, but uh, it smells like old garbage. As we mount it, we're going to make sure that we preserve and insulate that smell from the rest of my house. Let's start with this instruction manual. It's really like crinkly, like it's been compressed, maybe got wet and dry and wet and dry, even though it was out in the desert. I suppose the dry conditions helped a bit. Is this tips on getting ET home fast? This is interesting. This was included because the ET game was considered too difficult. Not only are there instructions, they had to include this how can you win the game because it wasn't really obvious. It's a hard game. They had to have a special flyer just for that. Another Howard Scott Warshaw game, Raiders of the Lost Ark, being promoted here inside of ET. Not, uh, not too bad considering it was underground for 30 years. Okay, but let's get to the real star of the show. It's kind of a surreal experience just handling this. I mean, just a look, yeah, the cartridge is still intact. Well, intact, the relative term. It's in the box. Now, it's intact it is, but we'll never find out because I will never pull it out of there. I'll just, I'm just kind of speechless. I'm just soaking it in. All things considered, it's not in terrible shape. Uh, I mean, yes, it looks like something that's been buried and forgotten, but for me, it's very just amazing to be holding this in my hand. It's part of video game history. It's, it's not trivial. Wow. Let's see a little peek inside. Yeah, there's some more manuals in there, some documentation. But I'm not going to risk damaging it, pulling any of that stuff out. We're looking good, considering. <laughs> it was really a travesty that this jewel came to me in a filthy Ziploc bag. And that's not going to stand. We're going to give this the display it deserves. And we'll do that right after a little more on the history of this cartridge and the dump. On May 28, 2013, the Alamogordo City Commission granted Fuel Industries, a Canadian company, six months of access to the landfill to film a documentary about the burial, called Atari Game Over, and to excavate the dump site. By the way, if you haven't seen the documentary, I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it in the description down below the video. The excavation started on April 26, 2014. After several hours of no results, Ultimately, more than 20 feet down, under layers of garbage and dirt and concrete, the urban legend was finally made real. Remnants of E.T. and other Atari games and peripherals and controllers were pulled from the pit. A team of archaeologists was present to examine and document the Atari materials unearthed by the machinery. It's been estimated that roughly 700,000 cartridges had been dumped back in 1983. Of those, about 1,300 carts were rescued from the tomb. The remaining materials were deeper than expected and made them more difficult to access. When they were done, the excavation pit was refilled, and those who had worked with the city to arrange the excavation said that this was almost certainly a one-shot to recover materials from the site, and they don't expect the city would ever agree to a similar event again. So what happened to those 1,300 cartridges? A fraction of them were given to the New Mexico Museum of Space History for display. One of the ET cartridges was given to the Smithsonian Institution. About 100 of them were given to the documentary producers and crew. Of the remaining carts, 881 were placed up for auction to the public by the city of Alamogordo. They hit eBay in September 2015. This, by the way, is where I first bid and lost on my own copy of an Alamogordo ET. In that auction, over $107,000 were raised. The price for some ET games fetching more than $1,500. About 300 more cartridges were held back by the city of Alamogordo to possibly be sold at a later date. And of those 881, one of them is right here in my hands. Now then, it's time to give this beautiful piece of rescued video game history 
a respectful home. Quick trip to the craft store, netted me the supplies I need, a shadow box, a frame, some picture mat. So let's get started. First, let's go ahead and open up the shadow box and remove any of this temporary paper inside. I won't be needing any of that. Set that aside. Next, I'm going to mount the certificate of authenticity from Alamogordo right into this mat that I've had pre-cut by the craft store. Make sure it's dead center. And that looks pretty good. Next up comes the real meat and potatoes. It's time to mount the cartridge into this clear acrylic box. I'm going to very carefully, gingerly take it out of that smelly old bag. Set that aside and then figure out how best to align these inside of this frame to really show off the cartridge, the box, the manual, everything that I have. I decided to kind of set them side by side with the cartridge and the manual kind of aligned next to each other. Yeah, I think that'll work. So this frame is only five sided, not six. So I took some of that same mat that I cut out and I'm going to use that for the back of this box. Now this is going to seal in all of the smell and also keep it safe and secure. Just tape off these remaining sides. And yeah, that looks about right. That's what I was shooting for. Maybe better than I was hoping. It's all sealed up, a little extra on the corners. Next up is this metal certificate of authenticity emblem. I've decided to mount that on the outside of the box, dead center, just above bottom. A little bit of glue and perfect. Next up, I'm going to take the completed acrylic box with the cartridge in it and mount it right on that mat backing where I had already mounted the certificate of authenticity. A little heavy duty craft glue and position that just right. Can never be too perfect. So I'll just check my measurements and make sure it's square before it dries. Finally, it's time to assemble everything together. Into that shadow box, I'll put this mat board along with the backing. And voila. I was super psyched with how well this turned out. It was exactly the way I'd envisioned it. Maybe a little better. Sometimes you get lucky. They say it's better to be lucky than good. There she is then. I feel really fortunate just to have this piece of video game history in my possession. I mean, yeah, it's mine, but I really feel like I'm a steward of it. There are so few pieces that commemorate the crash of 83 and the downfall of Atari and just kind of the resurrection, how much we all continue to love games of that era. Just like having this piece in my home, it's not like a poster I'm gonna hang that it's gonna be thrown away when I'm dead. I mean, this is something one of these is also in the Smithsonian. I mean, pfft, that's just mind blowing. And I have one too, I'll pass it down. It's something that's always gonna be around and I'll continue to hand off to other people who love this, but not for a long time. I'm keeping this one until I'm gone. I can't thank you enough for joining me for this very special GXG video. Please remember to subscribe down below and enable notifications so you'll always be alerted when we post new content here on Gen X Grown Up. And we wanna know what you think Use the comments down below to tell me about your memories of the 83 crash or what you think of my framing job. And of course, be sure to give us a little thumbs up and most importantly, share this video and our channel wherever it is online that you hang out. Thank you and I will see you next time. Don't you know that you're a grown up? No games, no puns. Not a lot if you're a grown up. No more washing shows till sun.